Bon, donc la dernière partie du programme est, est consacrée au programme européen sur la technologie quantique. Donc la, la dernière partie du programme est consacrée au programme européen sur la technologie quantique. Et donc j'ai le plaisir de présenter euh, Madame Elisabeth Jacobino, que tout le monde connaît, du, du LKB, et qui est euh, membre donc, du comité à haut niveau mise en place par la Commission européenne pour, pour préparer le flagship. Et donc, elle va nous en parler maintenant. Merci. Merci. OK. Um, thank you very much for this invitation to this very uh, interesting uh, 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 meeting. And uh, what I'm going to uh, talk to you about is this uh, quantum technology flagship that uh, was just launched by the uh, European Commission. Uh, and that I, I know quite well since I was part of the high-level uh, steering committee that the Commission had uh, uh, chosen for this. So I'm a, a quantum physicist at the Laboratoire Castel Bruxelles uh, CNRS, and also I also work at the French Research Agency as an advisor. Uh, now, uh, first I would like to emphasize that this quantum uh, flagship has a a scope which is broader than quantum computing. It involves quantum communication, uh, quantum uh, sensing, quantum simulation, and quantum computing, and also a basis of rather large uh, basic research for uh, quantum information. So uh, what uh, should be emphasized is that uh, uh, the, uh, the things that are the most used in uh, information now, the laser and the transistor, are also quantum objects, and they, their operation rely on the uh, uh, laws of quantum physics, uh, except that, of course, it, it's not uh, particle by particle. I mean, you have many photons going out uh, of a laser and many electrons in a transistor, but apart from that, they are quantum. And uh, now, the point is that presently, we arrive at a stage, as, 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 as many uh, uh, other speakers emphasized, where uh, we uh, are at, at, uh, in a regime where the transistors are so small that they get to the atomic scale and that uh, they will not be able to uh, follow Moore's law for very long. And uh, so the future is even more quantum, and even more quantum means uh, um, we will have to consider uh, individual particles. So uh, this quantum technology, so the first quantum revolution, as I said, was uh, uh, allowed by the discoveries of the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, and the second quantum revolution, which is emerging now, uh, will uh, uh, use individual quantum objects to design novel devi devices. And this is quite interesting to see that once more, as many discoveries, it was unexpected. And even Schrödinger himself uh, said in uh, 1950, uh, we never experiment with just one atom or one molecule. This is impossible. Uh, and uh, this would entail ridiculous consequences. So now, of course, uh, uh, 10 or 20 years later, people in the lab started to operate with individual particles. And now the second quantum revolution really relies on these uh, individual objects, either individual photons or qubits, etc. And uh, uh, they will use, and they use these, these uh, two important properties that have been uh, uh, mentioned before. The superposition principle, where here uh, a state can be uh, in two uh, um, it can be a superposition of, of two basic states at the same time. Uh, and then when, they, uh, when a single electron goes, uh, 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 a flow of single electrons like that goes through a double slit, they, go, they, they sense both sl slits and they only go uh, to the place where uh, there is a, um, um, an interference fringe uh, which would happen with classical uh, optics. So this is uh, 
uh, a very specific property of this uh, quantum superposition that these particles behave both as particles and waves. And uh, this is at the basis of quantum key distribution, which is much more advanced than quantum computing and already used in commercial applications. So uh, it's based on uh, this uh, quantum superposition. So uh, you have a photon and the zero and the one are uh, encoded on the polarization, either uh, vertical or horizontal. And uh, so uh, one is uh, vertical, zero is horizontal for the, the example. And now, uh, where is the secret? The secret is not in, uh, in the way they were encoded. The secret is in the basis. Because if you turn the basis by a, a random angle, then the photon will be in the superposition of zero and ones if the zeros and the ones are in these directions. And if you try to read the state of the photon as a zero and one here, uh, you won't know, I mean, it will happen uh, the result will be quite uh, random. So uh, to read the result here is to have, you have to know the basis. And then if you know the basis, you can make a measurement and the result of the measurement is reliable. And this is the, uh, the, the uh, basis for this uh, quantum uh, uh, communication. Uh, the uh, sender sends uh, uh, photons, which are encoded in zero and ones, but on a basis which is randomly changed from one to the other. Then the receiver uh, reads the photons also in a random basis because he doesn't know the right basis. And then they communicate by phone to know uh, which measurements were right, and they eliminate the other ones. But then a spy cannot uh, use the uh, results that he has obtained because when he has uh, uh, measured the photon, uh, he, has, he had a random basis and uh, every other time he, has, he had to send another photon to uh, not to be uh, uh, identified and the photon he sent was wrong. So uh, had a, a random basis. So he has, he has sent back a photon that had no meaning. So the spy can be detected by checking a, a few photons. And uh, this is due to the fact that to measure the state of a photon, you have to know the basis. OK, so this is superposition. And of course, entanglement is, can be uh, also used for a uh, resource for quantum key distribution. Because then, you, uh, for example, you have a source that emits two uh, entangled photons. And when you measure one uh, uh, on one side, you know the state, of the, the state of the other one on the other side is either the same or opposite to the, uh, uh, the one you have measured. But uh, to detect the right number, again, you have to know the basis where you should measure. Otherwise, it's useless. So this is, for example, uh, things that the properties that are used in uh, uh, quantum key distribution and that are easier to uh, operate than a quantum computer because uh, the photons uh, can propagate uh, on a quite long distance uh, without being disturbed. Okay, so now this uh, uh, quantum technology flagship will be uh, um, has been launched in, in Europe, and you see in Europe there are lots of uh, 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 people. Here you have the number of uh, uh, researchers working on, on this uh, subject in, uh, in Europe, so it's permanent people. And here all the uh, companies that, are, that have manifested uh, interest. Uh, in France, uh, here uh, quite a lot of uh, labs and institutes working on this subject. Here the Ile-de-France region uh, is shown on this uh, slide and it, it has about 50% of the uh, people working on quantum technologies and it's supported by a network uh, by, um, funded by the Ile-de-France uh, region. Uh, now uh, it's also supported by uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, 
groups and uh, funding. So uh, two uh, GDR from uh, CNRS, um, one uh, this uh, Paris Center for Quantum Computing, Fabrication Platforms, Excellent Initiatives, uh, uh, Lab of Excellence, and several uh, regional ex initiatives in, ad in addition to the one uh, from Ile de France that I just mentioned. So uh, the French Research Agency, ANR, also uh, uh, is involved in this uh, system. And uh, it has a specific uh, budget for quantum technology that the uh, ministry decided recently uh, with a, a specific uh, evaluation committee and uh, 10 million euros per year. Uh, it uh, participated uh, very efficiently in this uh, Quantera project that I'm going to describe in a minute uh, with uh, three million for the French, uh, ah, sorry. Uh, this is, um, sorry, the wrong. Uh, okay, and uh, there will be another uh, call for this uh, uh, Quantera uh, RNET system uh, next year. Okay, so this uh, Aeronet co-fund action was launched by the uh, uh, European Commission in uh, 2016. Um, it's on quantum technologies and it has a broad scope with communication, simulation, computation, information sciences, metrology, sensing, imaging, etc. And it's, uh, it focuses on uh, low TRLs uh, FET light, long term vision, etc., and the project size were uh, supposed to be one to two million uh, euros uh, and involving uh, at least three partners from three countries in Europe as the FET uh, program. Uh, it was uh, very successful. Uh, almost all the countries in Europe uh, were involved, uh, and in addition with Turkey, uh, Israel. And um, it, uh, so you have here the list of the countries. And uh, together with the contribution of the uh, European uh, Commission, which was about 10 million, the budget for this uh, program was 38 million euros, uh, which was uh, quite uh, large for this kind of uh, system. And uh, so we had the strategic advisory board with uh, well-known people in uh, quantum physics, uh, Peter Knight, Tommaso Calarco, Alain Aspey, and also people from industry, Bruno Derwell, uh, Kelly Richtel, etc. Um, uh, in, in one slide, uh, the call was launched in uh, January last year. The deadline for the pre-proposals were 15 of March, 22 uh, 222 pre-proposals were submitted, which is a lot, um, and uh, 92 pre-proposals were accepted, and people were then invited to write full proposals, uh, and uh, uh, notification for uh, accepted proposal was in October 2017, with 26 proposals accepted. So. On the one side, it was a big success because more than 200 proposals is very interesting. On the other hand, I mean, the success rate is just a little higher than 10%. So in this uh, side, it's a little disappointing, especially uh, when you have this kind of success rate. There are lots of very good and excellent projects that are just below the threshold and that cannot be funded. But... Uh, there is the, uh, now the uh, European Quantum Technology flagship, and uh, this was launched in uh, 2016 again with the uh, uh, European Commissioner Oettinger, who was convinced by uh, all his colleagues that quantum technologies were very important. And uh, 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 for a year with this high-level committee, we worked on a report uh, for the uh, European Commission to uh, uh, describe this, the strategy and the operation of this flagship. 
So the idea was to have uh, four uh, pillars, as I said, communica quantum communication, quantum computation, quantum simulation, quantum sensing, metrology, uh, imaging, and uh, also a horizontal uh, basis for, for science, for basic science supporting quantum uh, technologies. Um, and uh, the idea is that it's launched for 10 years with 1 billion euros. Actually, it's uh, uh, 500 millions from the commission, the other 500s being uh, provided by the member states. <coughs> the first proposal was open uh, end of 2017 with a deadline end of February and about 150 million euros. Here is a more detailed description of these, uh, all these pillars, but you, you know, I mean, uh, especially here. Here is uh, the list of the uh, people in this high-level steering committee. So 12 uh, academic uh, members here with uh, here observers in people from the commission. Uh, so I, I was in this uh, committee and, uh, and uh, also um, uh, people, you know, from uh, various countries and, uh, uh, and here, uh, also 12 people from industry and you see uh, here Cyril Alouche uh, from uh, Atos. And also uh, Daniel Dolphy uh, from uh, Thales. Um, so uh, the, this high-level uh, steering committee had to uh, deliver advice on uh, three main uh, subjects. Uh, the strategic research agenda, so a long-term roadmap, uh, an implementation model to describe how uh, things will uh, progress, and a governance model uh, inside the, the flagship. And the idea uh, was to have something different from the two existing flagship uh, uh, HBP on, on brain and, and uh, this because, uh, and, and uh, graphene, because uh, these are considered as slightly too closed on themselves and uh, not enough uh, um, uh, possible uh, implication from all the scientists in Europe. So here in this case, it's uh, much more open. So um, for the strategic research agenda, so we have these four pillars that I described already in a transverse cross-cutting domain on uh, basic science. Uh, excellence, of course, and also uh, disruptive technologies. So uh, in these uh, uh, projects, uh, companies must be involved and uh, contribute to proposals for novel technologies. So um, for the government's model, we proposed a diagram like this where the, the board of funders, which include uh, the uh, European Commission and the member states, interact with a steering board, uh, which is an ensemble of uh, independent external uh, uh, scientists from academy and industry. Uh, here, a uh, science engineering board uh, composed of representatives of, of the uh, selected projects. And here, uh, a flagship uh, a coordination office, which is uh, a CSA, uh, which is uh, um, funded by the commission. And here, everything is in interaction with the... Uh, ah. This is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sort of uh, uncontrolled uh, evolution. With a strong interaction with the scientific community. Okay, now the commission uh, didn't like this diagram too much, so they proposed another diagram. You see it's uh, much richer, uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, and you see uh, the uh, European Commission has a, uh, a box for itself, uh, independent of the member states. Uh, and there is a, 
Here, this, uh, what was called the steering board is now called the strategic advisory board. But, and apart from that, there is the science and engineering board composed of uh, representatives of the flagship projects and of the Conterra projects, uh, interacting with national activities. And here, the coordination and support action, which is a CSF uh, funded by the uh, European Commission to handle uh, the uh, communication uh, in the uh, European uh, scientific community. So uh, for the strategic level, um, we, uh, you see here that, of course, the Commission uh, uh, has the final uh, hand on the project selection and funding, uh, but uh, the, the Board of Funders, that's the member states, uh, also uh, discuss with this and the Strategic Advisory Board uh, uh, monitors the project of the, the progress of the flagship and, uh, uh, the, uh, and can propose uh, updates of the strategic research agenda, which is very important. Over 10 years, you want to uh, adapt to what has been done, and et cetera. Uh, so the, uh, the, this uh, strategic advisory board, again, is, made of, is composed of academic members, industrial members, etc., and uh, meets a few times a year. Uh, now, the Science and Engineering Board, as I said, is composed of uh, uh, coordinators of the uh, flagship project that have been uh, funded and uh, representatives of the Conterra projects that have been funded too. Uh, and uh, it has this task of uh, uh, putting people together, coordinating the activities, collaborations, and uh, interacting with the uh, advisory board um, to promote uh, uh, here uh, is, uh, and to uh, and works with this uh, coordination and support action that has been uh, created uh, end of last year. So it's a uh, coordination and support action, as I said, um, funded by the uh, European Commission. Uh, which has, it's not very much money, it's I think uh, 1 million euros, it's for one year and a half, and uh, it's, uh, so it's called uh, uh, QSA, but uh, so it, it networks, it's a networking of the stakeholders, uh, uh, using all the uh, initiative in quantum technologies, managing the, the information data uh, on, on quantum, which is very important, Organiz organizing workshops, benchmarking, as uh, we have seen in the previous talks, benchmarking is very important. Uh, also facilitates international cooperation, etc. So there are lots of activities which are outside the specific uh, projects and that uh, are where all the uh, European community, scientific community is supposed to uh, interact. So this uh, first uh, quantum coordination and support action that I uh, just described the, 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 the task before is uh, made, uh, uh, I mean, all the uh, Euro countries in Europe participate, but it's uh, mainly handled by uh, these five uh, um, people. So University of Ulm, it's uh, Tommaso Calarco, uh, and uh, Bosch, Thales, University of Geneva, and University of uh, Saarland. And in France, it's the uh, uh, Thales uh, representative uh, who is the partner. Now, uh, it will be finished soon, and there is another uh, CSA that has been uh, uh, proposed. And this one will, uh, for this time, last uh, 30 six months, so until 2021. Uh, this one will be called uh, QFLAG. So it's not accepted yet, but in the call it was the only candidate, so we hope it's not going to be rejected. And here there are uh, seven uh, uh, operating partners from uh, uh, Germany, Switzerland, uh, Netherlands, France, it's, now it's uh, CEA. Uh, Germany again, Italy, and Spain. 
Uh, and in France, the coordinators are from CEA, Yves Sanson, Philippe Chomaz, and I think uh, Yves Sanson is here, so, and he helped me uh, for all this information, so you can uh, uh, suddenly ask questions to him. Uh, so now the uh, work packages for these ESAs are, so it's not exactly the same for the, the two CSAs. The one, for, first one, QSA, is, but they, they, they all have uh, strategy structuring, innovation, exploitation, education, outreach. So here they are separated, but, and they are uh, um, governance and uh, organization uh, structure, and of course, management. So uh, now, uh, the real life uh, and projects. So the work program, uh, so this is the end of Horizon 2020. And uh, it corresponds to the ramp up phase of this flagship. So it, it lasts until two, uh, 2020. And uh, it, was, it consisted of this uh, Quantera um, a call that I, I mentioned already that is now uh, over. And uh, so this uh, QSA that I described and a call for uh, projects uh, corresponding to uh, 130 million euros that was launched uh, end of uh, uh, 2017 and uh, the deadline was end of February. So, um, this, uh, again, uh, was a big success uh, because uh, the, the figures that I have, which are not official, but they, there are about um, uh, 10 uh, projects in all uh, the vertical uh, uh, pillars, except in the sensing where there are 20. So and they, uh, the European Commission requested to have big networks for all these vertical projects, so requesting about uh, 10 million euros. And uh, in the horizontal part, I mean, uh, basic uh, science, there are over 60 or 70 projects. So again, uh, this is a big success, but the success rate will be low, uh, and uh, this, is, uh, this is too bad. Anyway, uh, this shows the involvement and the quality of the uh, European uh, com scientific community on this. Um, and uh, as I said, you, you know, for these uh, four uh, pillars, the Commission uh, uh, requested a contribution uh, of about 10 million. I mean, it could be less, but since they recommended 10 million euros, everybody uh, uh, applies for 10 million euros. Uh, and uh, if you add all this, of course, the uh, success rate will be uh, higher than the, in the Aranet project, but not so high. So uh, we'll see. Uh, the, uh, the, there will be, uh, again, a very good project left so, uh, for the next calls. So there will be a second Quantera call with smaller projects that will be launched uh, Next, uh, at the end of this year or next year. Uh, this time, it does, is the, the first one was a coffin project, so with uh, 10 millions from the uh, European Commission. This one uh, will not be coffin, so it will have less money, but on the other hand, the handling is uh, more flexible. So, uh, but this is a, a good perspective, especially for the basic research projects that uh, will not be uh, Will, will fail for this uh, uh, flagship project. And uh, there will be uh, other calls for the flagship, but in the next work program, uh, FP9. So, uh, uh, a very interesting future. And uh, I think uh, uh, now uh, uh, this is the... Uh, the, the, the kind of uh, strategic research agenda that is mentioned on, in this uh, uh, report and in the call. So uh, uh, this is quite ambitious, uh, uh, 50 qubits 
in three years. Of course, some people, have, as we have seen, already have 50 qubits. Now the question is whether they are really, uh, uh, what is the lifetime of, of their uh, entanglement if they are all entangled? It's not specified here, so it's not so bad. In six years, uh, quantum error correction. So this is much more difficult because as you have uh, heard, I mean, you need many more than uh, 50 qubits if you do want to do quantum error correction. And in 10 years, quantum algorithm demonstrating uh, quantum speed up and, uh, and quantum advantage. So this is really ambitious, but in 10 years from now, we hope uh, this will be demonstrated. And I will stop here. Thank you. Merci. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions dans la salle Pas de questions. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous en dire un peu plus sur la contribution du programme européen, justement sur les questions d'amélioration du processeur quantique ou de sa résistance aux erreurs, etc. Alors précisément, hein, euh, bon, c'est décrit euh, euh, les, les, les objectifs sont décrits un peu plus en détail euh, euh, dans d'autres documents de la Commission européenne qui sont disponibles sur le site, mais, mais l'idée euh, c'est ça. Maintenant, évidemment, euh, comme on n'a pas pour l'instant euh, de système euh, qui est de manière évidente bien meilleur que les autres, Bien que les supraconducteurs euh, aient démontré déjà des euh, résultats intéressants et les ions aussi, euh, il faut absolument, euh, à mon avis, garder une base assez large pour tester euh, des euh, euh, réalisations variées, même si pour l'instant, elles ne sont pas très avancées. Merci pour l'exposé. Ce qu'on entend depuis ce matin me cite à penser que le troisième milestone là, est un petit peu on va dire, optimiste. C'est quoi la logique derrière tout ça On... La logique, c'est la commission. Ils ne vont, okay. vont pas lancer un machin pour 10 ans en disant à la fin « Ah, mais on n'est pas sûr que l'ordinateur quantique va marcher. » Enfin, voyons. <rire> Merci. <rire> Maintenant, je pense que vu les progrès qui ont été faits sur les dernières années, effectivement, si on pense à un progrès linéaire, ça ne va pas marcher. Mais un progrès exponentiel dû justement aux bases quantiques, pourquoi pas <rire> Une, une, oui, une question. L'exponentiel a, a beaucoup souffert dans, dans la presse. Dès que c'est plus que linéaire, c'est exponentiel. Voilà, exactement. <rire> Donc une question assez terre à terre. Dans, dans ces structures comme euh, le flagship ou Quantera, est-ce que des petits projets seront financés aussi Oui, alors, dans Quantera, des petits projets, c'était que des petits projets euh, du genre de, euh, en moyenne, disons, 2 millions d'euros, mmh. avec euh, minimum 3 partenaires, parce que ça, c'est la, la règle euh, européenne pour les projets euh, faits, mmh. et euh, 3 partenaires et 3 pays. Euh, okay. Mais c'était plutôt des petits projets. Mais il pouvait y avoir aussi euh, plus de, des demandes un peu plus importantes et, et plus de, de pays, et aussi des industriels. Euh, dans le flagship, pour les, trois piliers, les quatre piliers verticaux, ce qui était recommandé, c'était des réseaux importants euh, avec euh, beaucoup de partenaires et euh, demandant des, des sommes assez importantes, justement, pour se mettre ensemble. Mais dans le, la partie basique euh, horizontale, des plus petits projets, genre 2-3 millions. OK. OK, merci. Donc, il y, y a un bel éventail de... Ben, oui, de... et le résultat, c'est un très bel éventail. Hein, oui, oui. Donc, avec... Euh, euh, beaucoup de projets dans les, euh, les quatre piliers euh, et aussi dans la partie fondamentale. Merci. Bien, merci encore une fois. So... Mais bon, restez, restez présents. Hein. Il y aura un autre appel donc, fin, à la fin de cette année ou début euh, 2019, mmh. un autre Quantera, donc avec euh, un spectre très large. Et... Euh, avant, je pense que dès que le FP9 sera en place, un nouvel appel pour le flagship aussi.